Song-specific patches provide a simple way to accurately replicate all the sounds and parts of the original song and are designed to use in Sunday Keys, our all-in-one solution for live worship keys. All the complex programming is done for you, so your left hand can trigger textures, ambiance, and sequences, while your right hand is still free to cover the most prominent parts like pianos, leads, and pads. Intuitive song sections are pre-programmed to ensure seamless dynamic transitions. For this tutorial, we'll use the song's original key and tempo, but you can easily adjust these within the patch if needed. In this video, you'll learn how to play Because of Jesus using the song-specific patch from Sunday Sounds. We'll explore the parts, riffs, and sounds you need to play it live with confidence. Ready? Let's go! This patch has piano, pads, organ, and bass all triggered in the left-hand range, which stretches from here up to here. Then there are single piano notes triggered from here all the way up the rest of the keyboard. So you can play most of your chords in this middle range. Then from here up, you'll hear a second piano and some soft bell sounds triggered. Then in this highest octave, there is an organ lead layered in. This sound has a long sustain, which means you should be mindful of that as you're playing your parts with the pedal. I do also want to note that most of the notes that are playable in this patch are in the original key. But there are some passing notes that you can play as well. One of those passing notes is this note for you to play some passing grace notes like this. And then in this highest octave, you have every note available to play embellished chords or lead lines if you so choose to. And as you move through the snapshots, you'll have more sounds come in. You'll start the song at song section one for the intro, the verses, the down chorus, and the down bridge. At song section two, you'll play the medium chorus and the medium bridge. And at song section three, you'll just play the big chorus. For the intro, we're going to be at song section one. You're going to play octaves in your left hand and a piano lead in the right hand. Here's what the lead sounds like. And each of these notes lines up with a chord change in the left hand, like this. The second time you play that, you'll jump your right hand up another octave because up here you're going to be triggering that organ lead and you'll play the same thing. I do like to embellish the last note and I'll show you how I do that. So I like to play that grace note, which is this note right here into the sixth scale degree. But you can choose to leave that out if you'd like to. You can also choose to simplify this part down to single notes instead of octaves in the right hand if you so choose. If you do that, I would recommend playing your first octave right here and then jumping it up an octave to play the second part. This part comes back later in the song in between lines of the choruses and the verses. For the verses, you'll be at song section one. You'll play octaves in your left hand and chords in your right hand. In between each stanza or phrase in the verse, you'll play the lead line that we played in the intro, 
but I like to keep it down in this middle range so we're not triggering any of the synths or extra piano sounds up high. So here's the first part of the first verse. Now for this part, you can choose to embellish it here as well. If I was gonna do that, it would look like this. Then on the repeat of that verse, you'll play everything the same way, except the last chord, instead of being a four, you'll be a five. So I would play that lead line going into it like this. The next time you play the verse, you'll also be at song section one, but if your band chooses to build this part, this would be a great place to move it up to song section two. You're going to play everything pretty much the exact same way, but this part does tend to build, so you can choose to pulse your right hand and the thumb of your left hand if you want to fill space in that way, or for those descending lead lines, you can choose to play them in octaves to have it pop out of the mix a bit more. down chorus, you're going to be at song section one. You'll play octaves in your left hand and chords in the right hand. There are some short riffs in the chorus that I like to play that follow the melody line. Here's the first half of the chorus. So to break down what I just played, I started with my four chord. Then I like to play the part that matches the melody for this is my, and then redeemer up here, all together. Then we move back to the four chord. And sometimes I like to play that little lead line or that little lead into the minor six, but you don't have to. And I like voicing my chords in this way because I do like to keep the top note that I'm playing in my chord pretty close to where the melody is. It just helps the piano part to sit in the mix really well and allows your singers to match what you're playing if they get lost. So I end with that five chord there. Then the next half looks like this. So this part is pretty straightforward. You have your one over three to the four. to the one over five, five, and then into the lead line again. And for this part, I do like to make sure I play in octaves in the right hand because everything else I've been playing has been in this middle range. So I like that part to pop out of the mix. For the medium chorus, or the next time you play the chorus, you'll be at song section two. And for this one, you'll pretty much play everything the exact same way just with a bit more intensity. So you can feel free to add in extra embellishments or pulse your right hand more than you would in the first chorus. Now you won't play the lead line at the very end of the chorus, but you'll play a different lead into the bridge, which comes next. Here's how I like to play this chorus.
So at the very end of that chorus, I like to make sure that I press my song section one as we lead into the next section. And the lead line I'm gonna play there sounds like this. And that leads you right into the bridge. But before getting to that section, let's talk about the big chorus at the very end of the song. For the big chorus, you'll be at song section three. And this chorus starts with a dropout from all the instruments. So where you would normally play the four chord for now my heart cries, you're going to drop out and then you're going to play an, a lead line. And I like to do this in octaves, but you can choose to drop it and just play single notes if you choose to. But you're going to play a lead line up high and octaves down low. Here's that part. So that's the first half of this big chorus. The second line is pretty straightforward and similar to the other times we've played the chorus, but that first line is different in that we have the dropout and then you have the quick moving line up into the redeemer. If those quick notes are difficult for you, I do recommend slowing this down and playing it at a slower tempo and then bringing it back up to tempo as you get comfortable. Now in the second half of the big chorus, we have another drop out of all the instruments with the exception of a little lead line that follows the melody that you're going to play in this middle range. So here's what that looks like. So we start with the one over three for all the glory and then to the one who's worthy is what you're going to play in your right hand and your left hand will drop out. All the glory to the one who's worthy. And then you move into the last few lines that repeat. So this first time you play because of Jesus, I've been changed. You're going to play it like you have before, but you're going to end on a six minor chord instead of a one. Then you're going to repeat. And this time play the lead line that goes down. bring us down to song section one and then repeat the same part or the same line one more time but this is going to be uh, without the tempo or uh, with no click so it's going to be slower Now your band may decide to play this differently by leaving the click in and keeping the part at tempo or even ending it loud instead of soft. But you can feel free to change it up how you'd like. For the down bridge, we're going to be at song section one. We're going to play octaves in the left hand and chords in the right hand. Now we do have an octave line that leads into this bridge and that sounds like this. So I'm gonna play that and then go into the chords.
as you play this last five chord, you'll want to click the snapshot for song section two as you move into the second half of the bridge. Now I do want to note that I like to keep those chords right around this middle range and I don't go above this note because then I get into that delayed piano sound, which I don't want to pop out during this section. So I'm going to play the last line of the down bridge moving into the medium bridge and there is a piano riff for this part that you can choose to play in single notes or in octaves. I'll show you in octaves. The right hand is going to play this riff and it sounds like this. And then you go back into the same thing. And the only difference there is that instead of playing that last little bit, you're just going to end on that note. Then you'll just want to be sure that during that very last chord, which is the five chord, you're going to hold it out for an extra measure. And I like to use that measure to press my snapshot three or my song section three so that you can hear all the sounds increase moving into the next section. Head to the link in the description to get this song specific patch to use inside the Sunday Keys app. All the keys audio you've heard in this video was captured straight from the app with no post processing applied. The app is available for both iPad and Mac. This patch may also be available in other formats. If you'd like to discover more about Sunday Keys, there's a link in the description to learn all about it.